Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, uh, God bless you, comic book community. We you thank the Lord and welcome to KJ's Porch Puppy Comics, where if you can't run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. And to God be the glory for the things that he has done, the things that he is yet doing. Ah, uh, don't get it twisted, you all. Even though we see everything going on around us, the Lord is still sitting high and looking low. He's still on the throne, you all. He is still the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. And we thank the Lord today. Welcome to the Pickleboro episode 72. Again, we ask for you to like, share, and subscribe. Leave comments if you will. I thank the Lord for the comments that we had on episode 71. We thank the Lord, thank the Lord for Brother T. Ravis, Brother Rob, and Brother JJ, I'm going to call him, um, you know, in the comments that they had, Brother Rob gave me the, uh, was uh, amazing adventures with that beast I was telling you all about with the first appearance of the Blue Beast, uh, issue 11, and uh, we just thank the Lord, Brother JJ said he, he said he, he looked through there and he saw that Fantastic Four, so he figured he'd stay along for the ride. And T. Rabbits was uh, uh, liking the the Roger Rabbit comics. And, uh, you know, like I said, I just thank the Lord. I'm, I'm glad you're coming to look at the, at the comics, but I still wish, Lord bless, that y'all would just take the scriptures in. Uh, I will do you so much good, you all. It will do you so much good. So this is episode 72. And again, we're still with the trade from Brother Rob. And like I told you, I'm going to sprinkle in a little trade that I still yet processing that I got from Brother Paul, uh, both of these gentlemen from Owensboro, Kentucky, uh, through uh, Book and Music Exchange with Brother Rob and the uh, Consumer Mall in Owensboro, Kentucky with Brother Paul. And we yet thank the Lord for these brethren. Uh, it's a good, good, good pickup, good pickups. So these books I'm showing now are still from Brother Rob's here. This should be the last stack of the ones I got from him. This is Superman in Action Comics. This is issue number two, annual 1989, you all. And uh, I always like that uh, Superman cover with the Barbarian cover. Of course, it's a Perez and uh, I think it's Ordway. Uh, then uh, you can see all the other people that's contributing to the book in here. It's a nice book. I think there is a wee bit of a color rub and maybe a wee bit of a spine tick right in here, but it's a square bound. And uh, as I do with the square bound books, you all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. And it's a newsstand. Of course, I think they said after a certain point, it doesn't really make no difference whether it's newsstand or not, whatever the age is. I haven't really dug deep into it yet. Uh, there are certain books that I'll pick up just because I like the characters. I like the cover. And then too, y'all know me about the artist. But this one here had to deal with the Omega Men Action Comics 535. And that was a great book in and of itself. Let me see if I can pull this back a little bit where y'all can get a better look. There we go. Take the whole book in. This one here is another book done by Perez. Always like this cover. And uh, it's uh, Superman. It says his return to Action Comics. I guess when they done that little stint where they took Superman out of Action Comics and they just ran an anthology series with it. It had several different heroes in it. But he made his return. But this book here was as the same cover as Mike reminded me of, Brother Mike, of the original Superman cover. But this cover here is done by George Perez. Exquisite. Exquisite. I, I like it. it. It's sharp. It's a sharp book. Again, it's uh it's uh issue two, excuse me, six forty three of Action Comics. Uh, next coming up, we have Superman and Adam Strange in uh, DC Comics Presents number three. That's a 50 cent book. Remember what I told y'all about those 50 cent books now? 
because this is number three and it's got 44 pages, all new. Now that still took place during the time of the 35 cent on up to 40 cent run where they was, uh, they had the big uh, shutdown and or since they split with the DC and everything that was going on. So they implemented this plan of raising the books up and saying, you know, adding more pages. Uh, if you want to check that out, it's one of my older videos in, uh, from the first iteration of Porch Puppet Comics. And I was talking about how they done that. This in here is issue number four of DC Presents. And guess what, you all? It's 40 cents. Hmm? Hmm. This is featuring the middlemen. I like these characters, the middlemen, as you'll see later on down the road. Uh, I just like those characters. I, I don't know what it is about them. It, they're just strange. It's something different. And I enjoy it. And as they've always fighting that now, uh, this uh, chemical beast, I uh, forget what his name is, a uh, chemo, there it is. Chemo, chemo. Anyway, um, he has a whole, he, he always fighting the metal men somehow, form or fashion. Uh, and I think this might be his first time or maybe his second time going up against Superman. This another book I picked up is uh, IDW. Godzilla books, you all out there in the community. I don't know how y'all fare if you're a big fan of Godzilla, but... Uh, Godzilla books are, uh, I don't care if they Marvel or uh, IDW or whatever they are, they are hard to come by. And, uh, you know, I guess, you know, Godzilla is still a, you know, still a hot property, you know, with the movies coming out uh, with uh, uh, this Godzilla, what is it, uh, minus one, uh, and, uh, or Godzilla zero minus one or something or other. And then, of course, the uh, Godzilla versus Justice League versus Kong. You know, all this Godzilla is a hot property. So anytime you run across any of these books, you know, it's good to go ahead and pick them up. I do have another one that I had picked up off of Brother Paul that uh, I don't know what, what run this one is. But anyway, this one here is uh, All-Star Squadron. Squadron. Hey there. Uh, annual number two. I like the All-Star Squadron run. And the annuals are nice. They're just real nice. And you can pick them up. And uh, like I said, these bounce in and out of my collection frequently. Uh, they just do. They just do. Let's move these out of the way. And we're going to hit you with some Marvel team up. Marvel team up number 14, Spider-Man and the Savage Submariner. I always like those 20 cent covers. Those are nice. And this book is in nice shape. Y'all can look at it for yourself. Like I said, I have a porch puppy price point and a porch puppy condition point that I'll, I'll go to and I'll go to the line on some stuff. And then it all depends on what it is. But I mean, in a condition like this, who wouldn't want to pick something like this up? This book here is John Byrne. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's going up against a living monolith in this one in number 70. Because, you know, he done a stint of uh, Marvel team-ups, John Byrne did. I think it was started back in either 54 or 55 and it ran on up through the 70s, uh, issue 70s, uh, issue number, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that, you all. But these books here were just, they were just awesome. Anytime in the, in the living monolith, you know, anytime you got giants going up against, you know, superheroes, uh, you know, even with, I told you about my affinity I like with, uh, the army men or the armed forces going up against dinosaurs and monsters and stuff. You know, I mean, that's, that's, I guess that's just the big kid in me. I guess you all, uh, Marvel two and one featuring the thing and power man, another giant beast, you know, a braggadoon. Uh, they had some names back in the day, but, um, uh, this was a good book. 
as you can see, somebody put a little green star up here in an ink pen right up under the numbering of the price and the numbering right over things hit. But it still presents well. It's a great book. Uh, anytime I see Marvel 2-in-1s and they're in great shape, or, you know, to say the post puppy shape, I'll pick them up. This thing and Daredevil's alter ego, Matt Murdock, attorney at law. I usually pick him up if I see him. I always like the thing team ups. Uh, you know, I think John Barron done some of the art in those as well as uh, some Perez and some, uh, you know, it was just done by some, I call them the greats back in the day. Y'all know, uh, this is Marvel two and one number 57 featuring Windigdar or Windar, Windar, Wondar, I think is what it's supposed to be pronounced. But uh, it's got uh, Claw and Solar in it as the villains. It's also got uh, Marvel Boy. I believe he was being called Quasar at the time. And then at this particular time in the very next issue, this was dealing with the uh, Project Pegasus. Uh, as you can see uh, where Thing has got the bandage right here on his arm. I think several issues before that, he had gotten shot by... Uh, Diff Locks laser gun that he carried. And uh, so that was a running thing. It wasn't he got shot all, he just shook it off. No, he had to put the bandage on it. He ran with that bandage through the whole run. Now, Wondar ended up changing his name after because he I think he when he first made his appearance way back when, this Wondar character was just kind of childlike. He was just like a child in a man's body. And he was just like a loaded gun, basically. You just point him and pull the trigger. You know, and that's the way he was using his uh, People would use his powers. But then he ended up during this uh, Project Pegasus, and he ended up uh, getting his uh, mind back, uh, getting a sentient mind about him. And uh, it says, and introducing Marvel's latest, greatest superstar, the Aquarian. And this is who he ended up turning into. This is another 70s, as you can tell. Uh, you know, hey, it was the 70s. But still, it was a great book. That was issue 58 of Marvel 2 and 1 thing team up. We have a thing team up annual teaming up with the man called Nova. Again, they fighting these giants. The monitors is what they call them. Sounds familiar, don't it? But, uh, that was, again, a great book. The condition of these books, as y'all know what I say, what I say, they nice. They nice. Yes, indeed. We're moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Next book we have is Marvel Premiere. And I believe this is Hercules' first solo book. It's Kirby. And what else can you, he's going up against, who is this here? It looks like, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. looks like it might be Ares. I don't know who the chick is behind him, but uh, anyway, uh, this book here was still cool, y'all. And the condition of it is very, very nice. And, uh, you know, like I said, right now, my tastes are changing. And I see myself gravitating more back towards the, mm, I don't want to say simplistic storytelling, but I mean, you get more for your money and we're not going to touch on that. We didn't, I think over on, uh, uh, what it was, it what's his, what is his channel? Oh my goodness. Uh, Spidey, Spidey something 2.0. Uh, y'all know what he is. Uh, but they have, um, Somebody was talking about the price of books and I said, well, that's the thing we talk about more. So, you know, the price of new comics nowadays, you know, uh, $10, you know, for a comic book. And even though, you know, I guess I can justify paying more for gasoline because that's a necessity. I can't justify paying more for a comic book because that's my hobby. And, and you heard it from uh, KJ. Uh, like I said, your mileage may vary. Uh, you may, you may be able to handle it, may be able to deal with it. But, uh, you know, I, when I go back to these books like this and picking up stuff, I mean, this type of stuff here, 
Again, dealing with Marvel Premiere. This is Marvel Premiere 31. Dealing with the man, brute, wood god. And, uh, I mean, these particular characters and books, storylines, you know, we know these were just testing grounds to see how the, uh, the people in the, uh, comic book world would, uh, just, uh, you know, was this going to be a book we're going to try to run with or what have you. And, uh, like I said, you got, you know, 28 pages of, uh, of story. You know, some of the books back in the days had 32 pages. Some might have had more. And don't let them be annuals and stuff. They had more. But, I mean, you get maybe one or two, sometimes three stories in a book, you know, 60 cent, maybe even a book. But a lot of people say, well, that was back then. You know, now the cost of paper and the cost of this to do this and then the cost of paying the artist. And, and you know, some of the artists didn't get they do back in the days. Yes, sir. We understand. I understand and we know this, uh, Marvel Comics number 44, featuring the Jack of Hearts. Never could understand this character a whole lot. Liked the character, just couldn't understand it, you know. But uh, anyway, it was still something I dealt with, and I'll pick it up, you know, if it's in good shape. Uh, and so I just went on and snatched it up. This is another set that I'm trying to put together, comic book community. This is... Tales of the New Teen Titans. Well, these books, these little four-issue miniseries was all done by George Perez. And used to be you could find them in sets. You can find them here and there. You know, sometimes you can find them in the dollar box. But nowadays, I guess, you know, since the passing of George Perez and being that the Titans are still holding place in, in the, uh, if you allow me to say, the old guard's uh, heart as far as uh, older books, these particular books, you know, it's kind of hard to find in really good shape. And uh, I was glad he had this one. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think the first one was Cyborg. Uh, the second one was Raven. And I think the third one was uh, Changeling. Or it might have been a flip between Raven and the Changeling as far as the numbering. But I do know that the fourth issue, as you can see before you, is the young lady by the name of Starfire. You know, and... Uh, those books were nice. This is another set that I just about got finished. I'm glad that Brother Rob had this one. This is Micronauts number five, the special edition. It's just a retelling, you know, of the stories that took place in Marvel. I think there was maybe five. I'm thinking maybe five or six of these special editions. And right now, I think I have one and two. I think I picked up a three. And I think I got a three. That three from Brother Rob. And so now I believe I need to locate me a four. And then I have all this. I like these books like this when they get them all set up now. Keep in mind, this book here has a $2 price tag. And it came out back in the 80s. But understand that this particular book, even though it had a $2 price tag, it also had like maybe three or four issues in that one book. So you was getting a large chunk of reading and a large chunk of art for your money comic book community. All right, you all. Uh, this will be the opportunity for you to open up your ears and let the word of the Lord come in. Whereas our reading this morning will be coming from Proverbs again, but this time the 16th chapter starting with the second verse, and it reads, All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. The third verse says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. That means you got to give your life completely over to him. You got to let him guide your steps, order your steps. You know, you got to ask him what to do and how to do. You know, if anybody tell you they self-made this, self-made that, Look, you got to understand, you couldn't do nothing, couldn't have nothing, wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for the Lord. And the Lord, he's, he's what makes us. He is the making. He is the true meaning of success in Jesus Christ. Sixth and seventh verse reads, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. That means sin is purged by the mercy and the truth and the grace and the love and the holiness of Jesus Christ. And by the fear of the Lord, 
Men depart from evil. That's what happened to me. I departed from evil. I departed from filthiness. I departed from, from the things that was going to send me to a devil's hell. Uh-huh. And the seventh verse reads, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That is so true. Uh, I can tell you stories when I worked on the road doing computers and fiber optics, how the, the Bible said that the Lord would make even your enemies your footstool. And that's because of you stood still and let him fight your battles. The ninth verse reads, a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. The Lord can put you where he wants you if you let him, but you got to let him do it. Comic book community, guys and girls, only through Jesus Christ. He is the one. He is the only hope. He is the only way for the world today. Ah, my, my, my. Next book, you all. Swamp Thing number 13. I told you I was trying to put this set back together slowly but surely. Uh, these uh, Bernie Wrightson covers and interiors, very nice. I put him right up there with, uh, oh my goodness, what was that brother's name that done? Plug. Uh, that done the old werewolf by nights and a lot of the horror books back in the days. He done the monster Bun Frankenstein. Uh, he done those back in the day. Uh, Plug, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I know some of these folks are gone off the scene. They've, they've done died and, you know, but, and I know we got a new crop of folks coming in, but you still can't shake loose the old guard. You know, I mean, that's what made it possible for them to get where they're going. All-Star Comics presenting the Legendary Justice League. This is a, another 50 cent, 44 page book. This is issue number 74. Uh, and this here is a nice book here. Uh, I'm gonna go back and try to get these Justice Societies, the All-Star Comics that ran in the 70s. Those are pricey books, especially number 58. Because number 58 was the first appearance of this young lady right here, Power Girl. And uh, it's a nice book to get your hands on. I've had it twice. I've had it twice, but that's about all. But I'm looking to get them again down the road. And if I don't, well, Lord bless. I'm still happy with what I do, able to pick up. This is a newer book, one that I didn't have, believe it or not. And I'm wondering why. But the new age of heroes at DC that came out of the Dark Knight's Metal. You remember I told you that I enjoyed uh, the damage because he was a version of Marvel's version, well, DC's version of the Incredible Hulk, a soldier that had uh, ended up getting uh, experimented on and he would hook out and he would, uh, you know, basically that's what he was. He was a DC version of the Hulk. I'm hoping they bring him back and do something with him because he was a great character and it was something that I'd like to see again. This book here that came out of that same run of uh, New Age of Heroes is the, uh, the Terrifics, which is again a DC Comics version of the Fantastic Four. And those are, the books is gaining a lot of steam, I think, out of all the New Age of Heroes, these were the books that were yet still going. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they had a nice run. They had um, uh, who come who spawned out of that uh, Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, I think it was, uh, of course, Damage, Terrifics, Brimstone. Uh, let me go see. Sideways. Uh, the I'm, There's a couple of more that I can't think of right off the hand, but... Anyway, I tried to pick them all up just to see how the story was. They even had one that they was trying to taunt as the DC version of the X-Men. And I think Jim Lee was doing the art on it. Don't hold me to it. Comic book community, I could be wrong. It's been a while. But anyway, that was the last book that I had gotten from Rob. That was the last stack that I had gotten from him. And I told you I was going to pepper a little bit of what I got from uh, Brother Paul from the uh, the Consumer Mall. So as I do that, let me show you, and I'm gonna start with these here. These are Metal Men 
from the 70s. This is issue 45. And uh, these issues here, they started some of them. I can't remember who did the most of the interior art. It might have still been um, Walt Simonson, but you can start seeing the Walt Simonson covers as I go through. Now, again, as you're digging, I don't know how many of you run through it when y'all are digging through books. Sometimes you may have your list, sometimes you don't. But uh, being that I didn't have any of these, then I was trying to make sure I keep them and put them together. Well, when you start putting everything together to you know total up your trade and everything else, sometimes you just look at the price and you just go past the you know the number of the book. So I didn't realize that I some of these that you may be seeing once, you may be seeing them twice, you may see them three times. But it seemed like to me each one that I show it gets better than the first. So that's uh, Metal Man number forty five. Metal Man number 45 again. Metal Man number 46. Metal Man number 47. Look at the condition, you all. Metal Man number 48. This particular book ran through Madisonville at a little bookstore. And this was the only issue, maybe been one of them, that Metal Man, that uh, this... Uh, older lady had in her bookstore and she had them shrink wrapped. Uh, some of you that are familiar with the lady I'm talking about, T. Ravis, others that may know who I'm talking about, R.B., uh, Brother Skimmy, you know, y'all may understand she had them shrink wrapped and uh, sometimes the covers was just bent over, spine wasn't damaged, but then you'd have to go home and, and just literally cut the book out of the bag and, uh, but this here was one of the middle men. And as you can see here now, you can see the influence of, um, uh, Walt Simonson. So that's issue number 48 once. Issue number 48 twice. And issue number 48 yet again. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to tell you comic book community. Now, I'm at the steel. Got a few of them to finish up the set. I'm missing issue 49, but here is issue 50. If I can get them stand up right here. Sometime he do, sometime he don't. Issue 50. I'm going to need an issue 51. Here is issue 52. Here is issue 53. Now, some of these will be a placeholder until I can get them, like this one here, issue 54. Issue 54 has got some spine ticks running along the side, a little cover being a little dog ear up here. But um, again, like I said, some of these are pretty well hard to find, you know, in real nice shape. Issue 56, I'm gonna need an issue 55. I think issue 56 is the last issue. But like I said, these books are nice. This guy here looks like somebody from a Marvel comic. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Nebula? But anyway, I think he was more silver than gold. But anyway, uh, he says he is the inheritor. And I think they brought him back in the newer uh, iteration of the Metal Men. Jumping into, still staying with the... Um, Walt Simonson, we have Battlestar Galactica number 15. If you ever really collected Battlestar Galactica, now I'm one of those kids from the late 70s, 80s. Uh, I liked a lot of stuff like that. Buck Rogers, uh, Six Million Dollar Man, Six Million Dollar Woman. I saw something the other day somebody had on YouTube, uh, The Adventures of, uh, uh, what was it? Bigfoot and Wild Boy from the Sid and Marty Croft show. Some of you out there that's in my age group, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, going on, Battlestar Galactica number 16. Still a great book. Uh, JJ, if you're watching, brother, here come the Fantastic Fours. Anytime I see these, I pick them up. Prelude to the Civil War. And that's issue 536. And it's got Doom trying to pick up the hammer. 
and this is 537. These books are real, real nice, real nice shape. And like I said, anytime I, I see those, I pick those up. I, those are just nice books to have, you know. And if you ever got the first iteration of the Civil War, then, uh, and I know a brother had found the all the run, some, well, the whole entire run in a dollar box at a, one of the dollar sales. And I couldn't believe Michael Turner's books were selling like that for a dollar. I wish I'd have been there. But anyway, going into some Batman now. We have Batman 609. Uh, I like uh, McDaniel's art on these Batmans. Brew Baker's doing the art. And uh, uh, Jeff Johns, he's doing the art, uh, doing the writing as well. As both of those, they're writing chores. Uh, this here is another set that I'm going to put back together at some point. Batman 617. This is part of the Hush run. It seems like it's a big thing going on with Hush now. I have no idea. That's just what I heard. Uh, let's see. Batman 691. This was a trippy cover. Even back in the day. And Mark Bagley was doing the interiors on that. But I thought it was a cool cover. That was still during with the Batman Reborn. This is Batman 709. Sharp cover. Like I told you, I'm not, uh, I, I collect what I, what I like to pick up different runs of stuff. You know, it may just be maybe four or five books, maybe 10 or 12, whatever the storyline in the run falls into. This is Batman 710, Two-Face Returns, nice looking cover, Batman 711. Two-Face got the Riddler on the run. Batman, this is Detective Comics 583. These next two Batmans, I just I just love these covers right here, y'all. These covers are nice. Batman 629. Love that cover. This in here was nice as well. Batman 630. Anytime I run across them, if I don't have them, I'll pick them up. But like I said again, and I'll make the statement, you know, anywhere between 80 to 90% of the books that I'm showing will be remain in the pickle barrel. And this one here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, <laughs> the last book that I picked up in this uh, from Brother Paul that's been already processed, as I call it. Yes, sir. Don't laugh at me. Captain Kurt and his amazing zoo crew. If you can just read what's up there, it says Starsky and Hutch was never like this. And it's got, oh my goodness, Ali Cat Dabra. That's the, uh, I guess, the mystic of the group. She's saying, look out. Here comes the screeching tire. And down here it has Yankee Poodle. Yes, I said it, you all. Yankee Poodle saying, er, couldn't we just have recalled? Uh, anyway, as I told you, the name of this group, of course, you got Captain Carrot, the namesake. Uh, you got Rubber Duck. You got, uh, oh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Anyway, this one here is Iron Pig and the Turtle, the Speedster. And I cannot think of his name right now, but y'all will hit me up in the comments. But uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of people like uh, the carrots. I mean, not the carrots, but the the uh, the turtles. A lot of people like the Usagio Jimbo, which I like both of those properties. But Captain Carrot just kind of just, I don't know, I guess maybe because the the Atomic Rabbit, uh, Atomic Mouse, back in the day, Mighty Mouse, you know, those type of characters, things that I was familiar with, I enjoyed. But yet and still, you know, that is what we are dealing with. And uh, so, you know, as for the last book, that was the last book.
of the day. Again, I appreciate you tuning in for episode 72. Again, asking you to like, share, and subscribe. Go back and read Proverbs chapter 16. Read the whole chapter. It will do you much good. And hopefully this video will be out. Oh, uh, let's see. What's the, 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 probably be out on the 19th. So if you got your bells and everything set up and your, uh, you know, when these videos come out, then you'll be able to catch them. Uh, the next one will probably be out come Saturday. And, um, you know, I still got quite a few books. I won't probably show as many. Um, trying to really push through and uh, get them out there so y'all can have some content to look at. And uh, just, you know, again, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you stopping by. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, you know, let other folks know that, you know, Porch Puppy, he's, again, he's giving out scriptures and he's showing comics. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just something that I enjoy doing. I hope you enjoy it the scriptures and the comics. And as I say all the time, you know, only Jesus Christ can fill that void in your life, in your heart, in your soul. And again, it's nice on the porch. I love you, comic book community, with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Remember to pray for Israel. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for your families. Pray for your children, those that know the word of prayer. Pray. This is what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for prayer to be established. He's looking for people to live and proclaim who he is and who we and whose we are in this dying world. Uh, he's coming back soon, comic book community. Don't get it twisted. Don't get, rest on your laurels. Don't think that everything's fine and dandy. Get into your word because the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will and the word of the Lord. God bless you. See you on the next go around on episode 73. Have a good one.